Hi, our discussion for this semester is actually about uh, Theory of Structures 2. So before we start with Theory of Structures 2, we need to identify first what is the boundary between Theory 1 and Theory 2. So more or less, we will be we will going to discuss about um, statically indeterminate structures or we will be focusing on statically indeterminate structures for theory of structures too but before that let's have a review first on how do we compute or how do we determine deformations and we have different methods in determining deformations of structures for now we will be using the geometric method and before we go to the geometric methods we will be uh, discussing first the very uh, introduction to, to the geometric methods which is known as the elastic beam theory because all the geometric methods or all the formulas or equations regarding the geometric methods are actually came from or were actually came from the elastic beam theory so let's discuss the elastic beam theory Okay. So what is the elastic beam theory? No? So for example, we have, let's say, a uh, simply supported beam. And let's say it is unloaded. So if we will be looking on its, uh, let's say, I will cut a differential strip no? from... Let's say at this at, at this point. Let's say this this is this is distance x, and at that distance x, kukuha ako ng differential strip dx natin. So if uh, let's uh, enlarge the figure, no. So if it is unloaded, okay, hindi rin natin isa sama self weight, no, because it will still deform, no. So let's say it's unloaded. We will be looking at the at dx. Ito yun. So, ganito yung magiging itsura niya. It's just a rectangular figure. But, if we will be considering a loaded figure, let's say, this is your B, and this is your load. Okay. Ito pa rin yung cut natin, ha? Ito, itong part na to. This will become your differential strip x. And as we all know, if the beam is loaded, the beam will now deform. Okay? Yung, yung deformation na yun, uh, we can actually have a diagram no, of the deformation. Ito yun. Since it is simply supported and it is uh, subjected to gravity loads, it will only form a positive moment. Okay? And a positive moment makes the beam smile. So, ganito yung magiging itsura ng deformation natin. This figure or diagram of deformation is what we call the elastic curve. So elastic curve is defined as the exaggerated diagram or figure showing the deformation of our structural member or structure. Okay, so in this case, kung papansin nyo, nag-smile po yung beam natin. Therefore, the original uh, figure for an undeformed beam will now be Ano mangyayari if this is the neutral axis? So, as we all know, the up if it if the beam is subjected to positive moment, the upper part of the beam will be subjected to compression and the lower part of the beam will be subjected to tension. So, ibig sabihin itong part na to will contract tapos ito mag-elongate. So, ibig sabihin magiging ganito yung figure natin. Obviously, as we all know, or as a review in our mechanics of deformable bodies, the bending stress diagram shows a zero deformation, or zero stress rather, on the neutral axis, thus giving you a zero deformation on the neutral axis. Meaning, kanina, if it's unloaded, all throughout the section, lahat siyan, ang width niyan is dx. So, since sabi natin, yung neutral axis daw is or has no stress, therefore, or no flexural stress, therefore, wala rin siyang deformation. So, meaning, if this is the neutral axis, 
yung dimension niyan is still dx because it is undeformed. Sino po yung mga nag-deform? Those fibers that is above or below the neutral axis because sila po yung subjected to stress thus giving them deformations, elongation or shortening. So, sino po ba yung may maximum na uh, nagkaroon ng deformation natin? So, it's either the topmost part or the bottommost part of the beam. So, let's consider uh, let's say the bottommost part of the beam. So, this is under tension. So, it will cause the for uh, elongation. So, positive yung elongate eh, positive deformation kasi elongation tayo. Okay? So let's say this is now ds. Okay? Now, if we will be extending, as you can see no, hindi na siya diretso or hindi na siya parallel lines itong part na to. If we extend the line, it will meet at some point. That point is known as the center of curvature. Okay? Now, from the center of curvature up to the neutral axis, this is known as your rho. And we define rho as what we call the radius of curvature. Okay? So now, Let's define, or let's go back with our mechanics of deformable body. Sabi natin, we have what we call the strain. And the strain is just actually equal to the change in length divided by the original length. In the given figure, if we will be considering the formation ds, what is, how do we compute for the change in length? It is actually the new length, ds, minus the original length, which is dx. Divide by the original length dx. Okay? Now, since we are considering a differential strip dx, its angle will actually form a differential theta or a differential angle. Okay? In that case, <coughs> we can say that dx is actually equal to Rho multiplied by its differential angle. In that case, that is d theta. And ds is actually, let's define the distance from the neutral axis to any fiber. No? So let's say this is y. So we have ds is equal to rho plus y multiplied by the differential angle. So that is just actually parang circular arc. How do we compute for so how do we compute for the circular arc? Yung circular arc natin is di ba katulad sa, yung, yung circular arc natin based on our solid mensuration is just equal to the radius of the circle multiplied by the central angle. So ganun na ganun lang din yung gagawin natin dito since the radius of from from dx or the neutral axis to the center of curvature is rho, meaning the arc dx is equal to rho, which is its radius, multiplied by the inscribed angle, which is, in this case, the differential theta. So, likewise, ganun din sa ds, but as you can see, the distance from the center of curvature up to ds is rho plus y. So, that's why this will give you ds equals rho plus y multiplied by d theta. Okay? Now, Substituting it here, we have the strain is equal to rho plus y multiplied by d theta, ito yun, minus the original length which is rho d theta, all over the original length. So as you can see, we can cancel out d theta, then rho minus rho is just 0 and y over rho. Okay? Now, going back in the mechanics of deformable bodies, we all know that up to the elastic region, the stress is directly proportional to the strain. Therefore, if we will be considering here, okay, stress is directly proportional to the strain, and we will be considering flexural stress or bending stress, let's say that is Fb. Fb is just equal to 
based on our algebra, if we are using a proportionality and convert it into an equation, kailangan mag-introduce tayo ng proportionality constant k. In this case, the proportionality constant k is equal to e, which is, as we all know, what we call the elastic or the modulus of elasticity. Okay? So, we all know that the bending stress is just equal to my over i, where m is the applied moment on that section, i is the moment of inertia, and y is the distance from the neutral axis to anywhere in the fiber. In this case, that is on ds. Okay? So, substituting it here, we have fb equals my over i equals the strain e, which is equal to y over rho. Okay. Cancel out y. So, we will be having m over ei equals, equals 1 over rho. In this case, this is the equation for the elastic beam theory. And this is very important. Why? I made this introduction kasi po, on all the geometric methods that we have. Okay, we have the DIM, what we call the, the direct or the double integration method. We have the moment area theory and or theorem or moment area method then we have the uh, this is not cheesy bacon mushroom uh. this is the conjugate beam method okay all equations on these methods or theorems are actually derived from the equations of the elastic beam theory and that's why this is very important we will be using this we will be using this equation so on our next videos We'll be having a separate videos on every geometric methods no? so that we can have the discussion on how the equations on these methods are derived and uh, why they are called such. No? So, bakit siya tinawag na direct or double integration? Bakit siya tinawag na moment area? And bakit tinawag na conjugate beam? Okay? And obviously, we will be having examples. We will start first with examples on statically determinate so that you can have a review. Then we will be having examples for the elastic beam theory. I uh, sorry, the statically indeterminate beam. Kasi nga ang focus natin for theory of structures too is actually statically indeterminate structures. So uh, see you on our next video.